Hello, everybody. Uh, with Paul, we present uh, re research about uh, forensic investigation and advanced threat. Uh, the goal of, uh, of this uh, talk is to present a tool named Fastier Collector. We have developed a first uh, release named Fast Responder, but we killed Fast Responder and we make uh, Fast Responder 2.0 named Fastier Collector. So we present the new the new uh, the new soft and uh, with different case uh, on uh, with Paul. Yeah. So my name is Paul. Uh, I work with uh, Sebastian on the Sequoia Cert. So basically, I'm a reverser and malware analyst. Uh, I'm located in Luxembourg and Paris, and uh, I'm one of the co-organizer of BotConf. A conference dedicated to malware, botnet, and stuff like that. This year it will be in Paris at the beginning of December. So, uh, Sebastian, uh, in Sequoia, I'm, I'm an incident handler and a digital forensic expert. And uh, I love Python. I develop many tools on Python. And uh, like Paul, I'm a co organizer of BotConf. And I'm a member of Onenet Project, Chapter of Friends. It's uh, a big, uh, big project uh, uh, about fighting uh, malware and uh, criminals on the internet. So, what's uh, what's faster collector? Uh, when you start uh, the development uh, two years ago. Uh, there are different uh, tools to uh, make a live collect on forensics, uh, name uh, cross response uh, by cross strike. And, uh, uh, but the, f the, the problem of cro cross uh, cro response is not open source, so it's difficult to modify uh, the different uh, decoding artifacts on. Uh, on the on the Windows uh, Windows computer, so we decided to uh, develop f um, from scratch a new collector uh, based in Python, and uh, the goal is to able execute all all Windows version with the same binaries. So uh, Python is a good uh, uh, a good solution, and the the uh, con uh, a strong constraint is the collector is a standalone because uh, when you make forensics you don't uh, you you don't have to install uh, different uh, uh, tools on compromised uh, computer because you you kill the evidence in the computer so the uh, a, a Strong constraints is uh, the binaries is standalone without uh, installation plugin or models or library, just executing in standalone. And the second constraint is uh, configurable because uh, in when you make uh, incident response, you don't know uh, if uh, the the threat. Uh, it compromises uh, the computer, so you don't you don't know uh, which uh, keys registry was modified or uh, file uh, dropped on the computer or uh, DLL jacking. So uh, the, the 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 goal is to make uh, a, a software very 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 modular and configurable. And uh, we support uh, Windows XP until 8.1. And so we release today the, co the source code uh, in the new repository of on Fastier Collector. Yeah, for the, for the moment, the directory is private, and uh, we will switch on public after the, the talk. So. Uh, the tools uh, works uh, two uh, two ways. On two ways, just double click on the exe uh, directly, and it executes. It, it, it executed 
and he collect different artifacts, or directly in a CLE with the CMD. And uh, here, the example is just export the MFT and make a CSV about the MFT. So uh, when you when you make forensics on a computer, on live computer, the goal is to collect different artifacts. An artifact is uh, a piece uh, of um, of data on Windows, like registry key. So, like um, uh, like uh, name pipe, like uh, logs, like prefetch. So we st um, <coughs> we the first uh, the first step of the development is to collect all artifact in the sense institute of 408. Uh, the first uh, institute made a methodology to collect different artifacts to detect a compromised uh, um, computer. So we have, we, have the, we have based the code on this uh, methodology and we add different, uh, different artifacts uh, more interesting like MFT, like RAM, like file, collect different file on particular uh, directory like uh, app data, temp, and all artifact uh, collection collect it can be configura configurable by a file uh, a file um, config. So it's uh, it's an, the list of different artifact uh, we collect. So it's a piece of code of uh, the the configuration file. So we define a path a meme filter. The meme filter is to catch the different uh, the different file on the computer uh, um, and my and mime zip because we we all result is stored in the CSV files at the end of the execution. But if you want to um, to catch different uh, different uh, file, you you configure meme zip with different it's a, it's a mime type. And there, are, there is a grammar to collect with uh, if the, um, the, the different filters is or or our end, um, and different uh, different uh, properties like uh, size min or size max uh, extinction, uh, and uh, if you make a zip or not, uh, we can uh, filter on the certificate binaries, uh, embedded or not. You can um, ask to catalog windows to check the, the, the issuer and the subscriber of the certificate or directly on the execute, uh, the PO. And we have um, <coughs> a, a different rules Yara to collect directly on the on the on the disk, uh, we decode uh, many uh, um, registry key like startup, MRU, uh, recent docs. Uh, we decode prefetch. Uh, we decode um, MFT, MBR, and uh, all result is stored for the moment in the CSV file or uh, different uh, files uh, log. Yeah, I say file capture description and signature feature. Yeah, just uh, we support Yara too. I yeah. don't know if yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. So you can create Yara rule, and uh, the collector will check every file uh, located in the pass um, pass, and uh, will check if it match or not your uh, Yara rules. So <coughs> what? What is the purpose of this talk is not only to mention that we developed a tool and we will release it, etc. Yeah. Uh, my purpose is more to explain to you how I use it on a real case. So uh, he really quickly explained what we did. And now uh, I would like to speak about several topics. Uh, some cases are really mediatic, some others are not so mediatic. And explain how works the malware. 
basically, and how we use a uh, fast tier to detect it on incident. So uh, just for information, we decided to choose several kind of malware such as a uh, rootkit, bootkit, and more classic uh, remote administration tool. And I'm going to speak quickly, and uh, I don't, I will not mention everything. So I decided to publish a blog post on our blog at this uh, URL. It's not online yet. I will do that after the talk, and you will be able to download a PDF with a whole explanation and more detail, extra, extra. So, I think I've got five or six uh, case studies. Just if, if you start to boring after two, I'm sorry. So, the first one I decided to, to explain is uh, Euroboros to the snake. Uh, it depends on uh, AV vendors. So, what is uh, this specific malware for people that don't want, that don't, who don't work in this industry? Is a rootkit. It was published publicly uh, mentioned uh, at the beginning of last year, but it was used more or less since 2008, maybe a little bit uh, early. He probably state sponsored by uh, always probably uh, Russian uh, government. And some specificity is he used virtual file system. So instead of uh, storing file on the infected machine, on the C drive or whatever, he map in memory a file system, a kind of D, but without any uh, letters. And he he work in this directory. Every temporary file, every file uh, stolen, everything, additional tools and everything, he store in memory in this NTFS file system. So it's really useful for the attackers because it's not easy to identify it. And uh, the attackers can use the Windows API because it's a real file system even if you don't see it. So it's, for me, one of the particularity. The other one is as every rootkit, he hides itself. So you cannot see the .sys file, the driver uh, itself, the malware itself, with the Explorer, MS-DOS, or what you want. You are not able to see it first. And he did exactly the same thing with the registry. So the registry used to load the .sys file cannot be read with regedit or these tools. So it's more or less the two really specific stuff that uh, concern us for today. So as I explained, the complicated part on this kind of uh, investigation is you cannot trust the system because you cannot see the file. So basically, one of the approaches is to make an uh, offline investigation. You switch on off the machine, you take the hard drive, and you make the investigation on a more or less clean desktop. But uh, in for specific reason, for example, imagine it's an Active Directory or the Exchange server that is compromised, you cannot switch off the Exchange and say you don't have any email during my investigation. So we have to make a live uh, investigation and forensic analysis. The first thing is when uh, you simply uh, execute uh, the collector, you have several CSV file, as uh, Sebastian mentioned to you, and two files are pretty interesting in this case, is the file catcher.csv. So this file contains uh, all the files uh, that match the rules uh, he explained just before, and a zip file. So if you look at the zip file, he, what, what are the files inside is every PE file, or word, or this kind of sensitive file, and we have a filter to avoid collecting Microsoft uh, file, for example. So typically, on my machine, the unzip.l output is all the content of the zip file uh, we collected, because we exclude Microsoft file, extra, extra. And in this case, I've got three files, uh, the free last one. It's legitimate Microsoft file, but they forget to sign it. So too bad, we collect it. But uh, the first one is uh, the most interesting. The first thing is it's a .sys file, so it's a driver, theoretically. And the path is really uncommon for driver. Typically, drivers are located in driver32 directory and not in dollar, nt, unit, style, etc., etc. And in this case, if you use 
the explorer to uh, browse and see the content, you will not be able to see the NT uninstall blah 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 directory. So it's the driver used by the attackers to compromise the machine. So it's, in this case, it's really easy to identify it because we only collect four files. On the bottom of the slide, you have the, the output of, uh, uh, of the CSV file. So you've got the host name of the machine, basically. And you have the path. You can see the fdisk.sys. You have the SHA-256. And after, you've got the VT uh, virus total link. So basically, if you check the link and you don't have any results on VT, you have some chance it's not really normal, especially for a driver installed uh, on Windows system. <coughs> so this first two files uh, allow me to identify uh, where is the malware, where is the driver, etc. But I can use the startup.csv file. So uh, as you can imagine, it's a file that contains persistent mechanism. In this case, you can see that I've got a service uh, called Ultra. And uh, with my FDSDS uh, path. So even if the system is not able to read it with the Windows API, we are able to get it. Because it's really here. It's simply hide. So uh, just for, in for information, because I saw a lot of uh, stupid articles about uh, Snake, Turla, etc. Turla, the name is linked to Ultra. You mix every letter and you have Turla. Yeah, just for information. So another thing, if you read a uh, paper from an antivirus company, extra, extra, you Often, company mention he creates this directory, he has this kind of network communication, and on this specific case, uh, AV company mentioned that malware used name pipe to internal communication, and the name pipe are named in the article. It's isap http two etc etc. So, thanks to the collector, we have a file uh, in output name uh, name pipe csv, and if you look on it, you have every name pipe. Uh, that are open on your system. And uh, I don't have only four, I've got more, but uh, on this file I'm able to detect easily this uh, indicator of compromise. So I found the binary, the persistence mechanism, and the name pipe. Another thing is, uh, is the prefetch. I think you can explain what is prefetch. Uh, so uh, prefetch, it's uh, a mechanism of Windows to uh, charge quickly an executable and is stored on a folder C Windows prefetch, uh, different um, different files terminated by uh, point pref, and it's a binary file and uh, you have different information. The the program uh, well. Uh, the, the date of the program execution, uh, the name count of the the count of the execution, uh, and <coughs> the path of the the, the exe and all DLL uh, was uh, loaded by the exe. So it's very 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 useful to make an investigation uh, on a compromise. Uh, computers, because you have uh, you have you have this information. Yeah. So on this specific case, uh, we can, if you look at the prefetch, or the CSV output is directly interpreted. You don't have a, a binary stuff. It's yeah. uh, text in text plane. Exactly. So you can find free specific uh, stuff. It's in fact the usage of the virtual file system mapped in memory. So raw disk one is the name of this uh, virtual file system, and keylog is for kernel log. So the rootkit store is log on this uh, file. You've got dollar mft, so it's a partition table of the virtual uh, file system because as it's a real file system, it uses real uh, mechanisms such as mft. And the Q file uh, is an uh, internal file used by the rootkit to store several stuff. It's not really uh, important. And uh, 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 the MFT, uh, name master um, 
uh, file uh, table, it's uh, the whole history on the N NTFS file system on Windows. All uh, different modification creation on uh, by file on the system is recorded in uh, in MFT. So it's very 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 uh, interesting stuff to uh, have a timeline of the hard drive to to know uh, how to pass on the on the computer. Yeah. So it was the first thing, uh, the first case studies uh, I decided to mention, and I think it's one of the most interesting because in this case you are able to make forensics collect on file you are not able to to see. So the second second case I chose is Comrade. So it's something more common. It's a remote administration tool in New Zealand, but uh, it's more than probably uh, developed by the same authors. I say that because some part of court I simply copy past. So it's not an interpretation; it's really copy past. And uh, Something really, really specific on this sample is the fact that they use a really, really uncommon persistent mechanism. So, for example, if you use uh, auto runs from these internals to list all your process started at the boot, you cannot see it. It's not list. In fact, uh, how they work on Windows, you have come object. So, typically, it's uh, a connector to manipulate a Microsoft object. For example, you have come object to use the browsers. Instead of developing your own browsers, you can say, I want to use Internet Explorer thanks to this com object. And on Microsoft, more or less everything is com object. For example, you can manipulate the browser, you can manipulate Outlook, you can manipulate everything, every Microsoft product, thanks to com object. A com object is simply a number, a huge number. And what how the attackers uh, did the persistence, they create a com object with exactly the same ID than a legitimate com object. And when an application, a legitimate application, want to call this theoretically good com object, they use the ID, execute the bad one, the bad one does bad things, and have to execute the legitimate one. So in this case, you don't really have an uh, auto run. It's simply I hijack a legitimate Microsoft mechanism to make bad thing. So in this case, I use the file catcher. I've got a zip file. And in this case, I've got the free last file is always a free file not signed by Microsoft, false positive. And the two first one are .tlb file not so common, and it's uh, to P files, it's to uh, execute Apple or library. So I can guess that one of these two files are the malware itself. But as I said, it's a really, really uncommon uh, persistent mechanism. So in this case, our collector is not able to detect it. In the future, we will add uh, this uh, feature, but today we are no, not able to detect this specific registry key. The number of the com object is a huge stuff in the middle. So, even if we don't have the persistent, we have two weird files on the, on the system. Another thing that we collect automatically is a process uh, underscore dll.csv. So, it's every library loaded on every process on your system. So typically in this case, I've got explorer.exe, and this explorer.exe, inside of the process, I've got the two TLB file. So basically, they hijack a com object. This com object is used by Explorer. So how Microsoft works, what Explorer want to use uh, this specific com object, he loads the library that that is behind this com object, and in my case, it's my two uh, TLB file. <coughs> and uh, the the directory where the the uh, the DLL uh, was loaded is strange because uh, you have document setting, demo, application data, Microsoft. So it's very um, a good a good software. Don't uh, don't have the library in this uh, in this uh, directory. 
So it's yeah, it's, it's something it's, not it's normal, suspicious. Not coming. It's just just uh, f on looking, it's suspicious. But typically, except on several cases, if you get library inside of your document in sitting, it's not. It could be depends on how you install it. See so if you have standard and application, this kind of stuff, it can be everywhere, but theoretically it's not uh, so common. So the third case I, I decided to choose is simply because uh, it's probably the French Dutch, Donc I decided to mention it, is uh, Babar, the well-known. So for people, for non-French people, uh, it's... Uh, it's a common uh, remote administration tool in userland, nothing really uh, exotic. But uh, for French people, it's interesting because uh, it's more than probably because they more or less say they developed it. But uh, it's probably developed by the French intelligence. So, in this. Are shy. So, as a previous case, I simply get the startups.csv. So, every file started uh, with <laughs> this common uh, mechanism. And in this case, I've got this weird stuff. So, I've got a DLL uh, run at boot with a reg uh, SVR uh, executable. And the DLL is in document settings. <laughs> And uh, obviously, the DLL is start during the boot, and I've got a process uh, reg SVR with uh, in argument the .dll file. So as as you can see, in this case, developers doesn't really care about hiding stuff. I've got a, a process; I can see it. Even with a test manager, you are able to see the, the process. Yeah, you, you uh, to to collect the execution process, we used uh, WMI. Uh, Windows uh, management instrumentation, and uh, we list the different process uh, with uh, um, a WQL query directly on the com object, and we we have all process on ex on execution, and uh, to we uh, to uh, to list different DLL, we use the PS utils, and you, you have the different. Uh, the different uh, DLA, uh, the different handle on exit directly. So another thing is exactly as previously, I can use our uh, process underscore DLL uh, CSV to list uh, every uh, loaded library inside of binary, and I can see in this case that uh, on explorer.exe, on vboxtray.exe, on ctfman.exe the perf underscore uh, blah blah DLL is loaded. So basically this malware is loaded on more or less every process. It's simply a, a free example, but it, I've got more uh, process with uh, the DLL loaded. So another case study is Casper. So it's more or less a brother of Babar. It's developed by the same people. I say that because I've got exactly the same thing. They copy past code, so I maybe it's not the same developer, but it's the same repo. And uh, it's <laughs> it's a userland uh, remote. Uh, it's a classic uh, userland remote administration tool. So in this case, the developer tried to be a little bit more uh, clever, and they uh, use a persistent mechanism that looks like. A real one. So in this case, it's a VBox Audio Interface Device Manager, and on my machine, on my virtual machine, I use VirtualBox. And if I read quickly, I can miss the the sample because it's located in a legitimate directory. It's on program file, not on document setting, extra extra. So if I read too quickly, I can easily miss it because it looks like something uh, legit. So we have the file catcher that make zip of uh, executable file uh, located in several paths, but we don't pass program file by default. 
because we are able to filter with uh, signature, Microsoft signature. But if we do that on the program file directory, the zip will be gigabyte of data because you have too many applications, not signed, signed, signed by Oracle, Adobe, uh, I don't know. So by default, we don't scan this directory. As Sebastian explained, you can uh, have a profile and you can modify it and scan the drive, the C drive, if you want. Yeah, if, if you want to uh, collect the uh, exe in Provence file, it's possible. But uh, like uh, Paul said, it's too edge to analyze after. So we have different mechanisms on, on Windows, like persistence, like uh, DLL, uh, DLL loading. It's, uh, it's, it's, more, it's cl clever to collect this uh, data uh, to analyze than uh, um, exe in program files. So it's it just a paradigm, a paradigm, an hypothesis to, of collection. Yeah, and we don't mention that because we don't really use it, but it's implemented. If you wish, you can configure the collector to dump the physical drive. So you can get your whole C drive collected. So if you have space, you can do that and time, you can do that. Yeah. Another case, uh, really funky, is Polix. It was not really famous, but it's for me the first case of malware without any file. It doesn't use any file to be installed, loaded, and to be executed. So everything is in registry. So in fact, he used a, a, a trick to execute from the registry, decrypt content from registry, and execute this decrypted content in memory. So you don't have any file, and he doesn't need any file. And he's persistent, because we already saw malware without any file, but he's executed, typically collect information on the machine, send the information to uh, the bad guy, and it stopped. So in this case, you don't really need file. But for persistent mechanism, usually you need file, and in this case, it's not the case. And another fun thing is uh, the author decided to create a registry key with non ASCII characters. It sounds like stupid stuff, but for example, regedit crash when you try to read the registry key. It doesn't crash, you have an error message, but you cannot see the registry because uh, Microsoft does not support non ASCII characters for regedit. And uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding, but a, a lot of other tools have trouble with uh, registry key in non ASCII characters. And uh, to be honest, we had the problem before <laughs> I found the case yeah. and we patched it. Uh, yeah, we have patched the code to uh, decode uh, Unicode uh, characters directly. So because uh, in your registry we have, uh, I don't remember, but uh, you have three or four fo different formats to encoding data, so it's it's a bit uh, tricky. Yeah. For example, if you look, it's a current version run, so it's a key to run automatically uh, during Windows Boot, and the value of the key is uh, one zero one. So typically, w even today, if you create a key with this value, the key name, uh, Regedit have trouble to read it. And uh, so you have a uh, auto hands, and after you have these tricks that allow uh, I lost my mouse uh, that allow to uh, load the content of this registry key and execute it. And this registry key is there. So basically, here I got uh, JavaScript loader, and here I've got the content of the JavaScript. And thanks to these two registry keys, the malware is able to be executed at every reboot of the machine without creating uh, any file. So in this case, I uh, cut the output, but this one is huge. It's, I don't know, it's three or four page on my screen. So if you make a cut of the CSV, you can see a huge block of uh, data you cannot understand. So it's basically something not really uh, normal. 
and after you can easily uh, decode it, extra, extra. It's not the most interesting part. So, we spoke about rootkit, we spoke, I spoke about rootkit, I spoke about um, classic uh, remote administration tool, and in this case, it's a bootkit, uh, publicly mentioned by Kaspersky a few days ago, I think. And uh, it's not really malware itself, from my point of view. It's a tool that allows you to install a malware thanks to bootkit mechanism. So basically, you've got hdroot. In argument, you put the executable you want to execute at the boot of the machine. And hdroot put everything into good place to be able to start this uh, bad file. It, so hdroot alone cannot do anything. It, it's a framework to make a bootkit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the, the fun thing is the sample I found, uh, it's in fact, it's uh, Netstat from Microsoft. If you execute the binary without any option, you've got every option of Netstat. You can choose the option like a normal net, Netstat, but you have magic option, not documented, and this option are the framework. So it, it's interesting. So. In this case, uh, the bootkit modifies the MBR to be able to execute the bad stuff. And uh, on our collector, we collect uh, the bootloader on the file called bootloaderassemblycode.exe. And on one file, the .row, you have the raw data, and the .txt file, you have uh, the assembly code. And just for information, on the left, you have the, a normal MBR, so it starts by a, a lot of move instruction. And on the right, you have the MBR after the infection. So you've got move, move, a jump, move, 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 move. So basically, the malware modify uh, the beginning of the MBR to jump on its own code, do bad stuff, and go back to the normal uh, execution flow. So. Typically, thanks to this uh, artifact, you can guess that something goes wrong because you don't have jump at the beginning of the MBR like that. So it's a good indicator of compromise. If you are interested by this case on our GitHub, uh, we have a project called MISC or MISCELIUS, I don't know, and I put the source code of a tools to detect this specific uh, malware. And to, to collect the MBR on a live, uh, on a live system, we open the, the whole disk in, uh, in, uh, on a row, directly in a row, we, and uh, we, we read byte by byte the, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, I think it's a, uh, 500, uh, 520 uh, bytes at the beginning of the of the disk is the MBR. We decoded the the MBR. We catch the uh, the boot assembly code, and with uh, with this term, we transform uh, uh, hexadecimal uh, mnemonic in uh, assembly code to have. Uh, uh, human comprehension directly of the of the the boot uh, the boot code of the of the system. Yeah, because typically, if you read Kaspersky, Kaspersky article, it's really fun because they don't show you assembly. You have simply hexadecimal, and they write in red. It's a jump. <laughs> uh, Maybe they are really really good, and for, for they don't need interpretation. I don't know. <laughs> for Neo in Matrix, it's very easy. For but uh, a, a normal human, it's complicated. Yeah, so for conclusion, we know, we are not stupid, not too much, we know that uh, the collector is not perfect, some uh, artifacts are missing, uh, we have some bugs sometimes, extra, extra, but we use it in real life, on real incident and real case, and it works, he helps us, he allows us to find a compromise, compromise uh, system, basically, uh, each time uh, we read publication with new trick or we work on uh, 
case with new tricks, extra, extra, we try to implement the future on the, on the tools. We decided to push it in open source, so it will be uh, on GitHub in a few minutes. So feel free to use it. Uh, just for information, uh, you have the source code, the Python, and we will provide a pre-compiled binary. So you can use it without making binary from Python simply by double-clicking on it. So uh, it will be open source, so feel free to open issue if you have issue. And if you have some requests, not too much exotic uh, requests, but feel free to, to open it on, the, on, the, on GitHub. It's maintained, because uh, we saw every day a lot of library tools, etc. in open source not maintained. So sometimes since years, as we use it in real life, it's maintained. And it's more or less everything. Uh, we just want to uh, thank the people, the members of the Sequoia cert, because uh, they use it a lot. They had bug, and we try to fix it, extra, extra. So we have real users, and we have real pain. Yeah, yeah. We are we are four people to develop this uh, this collector. So a great 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 uh, job. I only criticize them from yeah. my point of view. I don't <laughs> develop on it. I say I want that, that. It doesn't work. Extra, extra. <laughs> so, thanks for the, your attention. If you have questions, feel free. Or awkward silence is cool too. Thanks for the presentation. Just a quick question. The first example you gave, it was a rootkit which was probably hiding files. Um, how does your collector collect the files that are already hidden because yeah. the Windows API are already hooked? So Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really fun because it's only by chance. <laughs> yeah. Could you expand? We, we are allowed to have chance. Now, uh, honestly, uh, if you look at the uh, OS.walk uh, Python module, in fact, visibly, it doesn't really use the Windows API. Yeah, it's like that. So even and in this case, the the hook to hide stuff are in kernel mode. It's not simply uh, injected in user land on specific process. So only this specific process are not allowed to see the file, etc. Et in this case, it's really in, in kernel. And uh, the Python uh, module works better than the explorer.exe, uh, for example. So it's, it's really by chance. So Python does not use the standard Windows APIs no. to list files? No. OK. OK. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, on the normal case, let's say a Windows computer that has been used for one year, uh, how long does it take with the regular profile you're using to uh, run fast uh, IR? Yeah. So it, it, it really depends. On, uh, on the default profile, uh, on inside of the binary you download on GitHub, for example, you only have uh, it's a fast profile. It goes really quickly. It's one minute. But for example, you don't have the file catcher. So you don't uh, create the zip file that contain exe in a Windows directory not signed by Microsoft. This feature is not uh, by default. You can create your own profile and say, I want to have it. Uh, the default profile doesn't uh, dump uh, MFT, for example. So it takes uh, some time. But on uh, Windows uh, seven with a normal setup and few applications, extra, extra. On virtual machine, so it's uh, slower than a normal system. It took uh, around 10 minutes in my case. With dump of MFT, MBR, file catcher on Windows directory, document settings directory, extra, extra. And the collect is around uh, 700 megabytes in this case. And I avoid program file, because if you add program file, it's gigabytes, because basically we dump everything, because nothing is correctly signed. 
And the uh, second question, if I may, uh, what is the footprint of uh, executing uh, fast IR on the system? Like the file you create, is it on the system? And then what's the memory fruit footprint? Because you yeah. can just yeah. run that. Yeah, I understand. Well. So no, you typically, something fun, you can collect yourself. If you are located in a document setting and you pass document setting, our binary is not signed by Microsoft, obviously. So it's detected like potentially suspicious. So we are not invisible for the system. If you look at uh, your, if we collect a memory dump, for example. If you look on memory dump, you've got our execution, etc. Et so it's not. Uh, 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 yeah, it's not like for policeman point of view, we don't, uh, the system doesn't stay perfectly clean. We have our execution, we have our output. Even if you can put the output on a share, for example, so you have less it's, trust. It's no law enforcement compliant. Yeah. That is the question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if uh, we collect, uh, we collect the, the different artifact um, with the method, we collect the first, uh, it's a more volatile artifact. If you, for example, if you make a dump, the first dump, it's uh, MFT, because MFT is very, very uh, um, movable. After it's memory, and after it's registry key, and uh, we have uh, an algorithm to um, schedule the, the different uh, artifact collection to collect to the more volatile artifact to the less volatile artifact. So j just uh, if, uh, for example, you have a, a, sh uh, a malware uh, um, attacked on memory, f on memory, just on memory, without file, without, uh, yeah, you can just dump the RAM uh, with, uh, we use we use directly a WinPMM driver to 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 collect the RAM, so, but uh, we we use uh, we developed the the Python uh, script to load directly the driver and uh, communicate uh, communicate with uh, with it. Uh, is a very very long just or just or just or key always suspicious or uh, you can have very very long register key non suspicious. Yeah, typically for startup, we register everything, every startup uh, entry. But typically, we, for the startup specific case, we only dump uh, well known startup uh, stuff, not uh, uncommon extra extra. And basically, we don't have so many uh, entries. We have many. It's it depends of the system. Yeah. But, uh, the, for example, the, the artifact light MRU. So it's uh, the action by uh, a user directly in the in the system, uh, like uh, open a document, close a document, save as a document. There are many many entries here to uh, or uh, serve, uh, drivers. The registry is keys to drivers is many. Uh, you have many things in this key, and but but in start in start startup CSV uh, startup key or a prefetch. You, are, you have uh, sm uh, small entries in the... And something we, we, we must keep in mind is we don't... Uh, we m must not work on only one file, startup file, but see the global uh, picture, I want to say. Because, for example, I had a case where the attackers uh, overwrite a legitimate binary. So it's uh, the uh, Adobe country. So it's basically useless. But the attackers overwrite this binary by a bad file. And if you look at startup, it's clean. It's exactly the same startup than usual. But if you look at uh, injected DLL, you can see that this Adobe eContray is loaded on every browser and explorer and on other stuff, extra, extra. So it's not uh, a normal behavior for the Adobe eContray to do that. So in this case, the startup is Useless, I cannot guess something, deduce if you are scientist. But uh, thanks to other files and other artifacts, I'm able to have a more global picture and say, OK, it's not a bad persistent mechanism, but behind the binary is obviously not the good one. OK, any more questions?
And while I'm coming up here, is there anybody in French intelligence that would also like to comment on this slide earlier? <laughs> Raise your hand now. Thanks for the talk. Uh, how do you deal with um, processes which um, you said you use do the MI, Windows Instrumentation Tools, to check in um, if a process has a loaded XDLR, XDLR. Uh, what do you do when the rootkit or uh, the malware uh, hooks and hides the, the DLLs? So, um, Paul explained uh, for the rootkit, it's, uh, you don't use uh, pr uh, process DLL CSV to detect. Uh, we use a file catcher with a different uh, signature uh, persistence because the rootkit must be start on on the system. But uh, yeah, uh, on on uh, on user land because uh, we. Uh, Fastier collector uh, is uh, executed in New Zealand is useless to to try to detect an hidden uh, an hidden process uh, in a but you you can dump uh, it's a, a bit a bit uh, strong but you can dump RAM so in RAM with volatility you can detect uh, hook or detect modification of S, uh, SSTD. Uh, by the rootkit, so uh, you have different way to the the picture. The big picture of the, the tool is to to have a collection um, to have a big uh, collection of different kind uh, persistent system or persistent um, uh, for or uh, drops on the system. So it's it's very very large. So we, we that's why we collect different artifacts and we 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 don't have the same evidence uh, in the different artifacts. Uh, it depends by the malware. Uh, two different rats has two different uh, behavior. So it's so that's why we collect uh, generic. We have a, a generic collection collect. And the policy collection of artifacts to to uh, to collect uh, more uh, uh, more more and more uh, information. Okay, uh, but uh, do you do you try to to check with uh, yes. yes to reply to your question? Say no, we don't see the injection if it's okay. not uh, a clean injection. I want to say, okay. but in the other hand, we have the handle, and if the badly loaded library. Have the process have an handle on it, you are able to see the library is not loaded, but the process uh, have uh, has an handle on this specific library. So you can cross the output of several files to have suspicious, typically. Okay, but fast error collector isn't able to do it automatically? No. I mean, disassemble no. the function and check. No, and for, for the moment, we want to split in two parts. In one hand, you have the collect, the forensic collect, more or less without any intelligence. And in the future, we want to create something to receive all the CSV and make uh, smart stuff on it. But today, we are focused on collect. And Yara, it's a little bit uh, intelligent. Yara is the exception. But basically, the purpose was to have a collect and in the future, put all the CSV together, put on the magic stuff and have a uh, output of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah you must have a human to read the CSV yeah. to, to uh, it's, uh, it's a, it's a picture. Yeah, it's not magic, sorry.